welcome you all back to our ongoing search for humanity and humility in the built environment here on our Hawaiian islands and beyond. The focus will be on beyond today. This is our spring break uh, break show and it's a very special, uh, probably never to be forgotten spring break. And we will see literally when we bring in my co-host to Soto. Hi to Soto. Hello, Martin, and as everybody can see, I am wearing a mask because we're starting our coronavirus. Uh, we're dealing with coronavirus now. All right. And I'm wearing a mask not just as a fashion statement, but the real thing. All right. Yeah. And we the show is intended to be, you know, care, but also encourage people. And we're hoping for us sticking together and doing the right things. Uh, we can get over this soon, and then hopefully. I can do what I've been wanting to do for years now is taking you back home to Germany where I'm from, the Soto. And so um, if we actually, the background picture here, if we can, uh, you could barely see, but there is actually my youngest son, Lenny, is sitting there. If I move over to that this way, side that's here. Right. And now point, other, under your elbow. Point the other direction. Yeah, yeah. Point, He's under your elbow. Point here. Point no, here, the, the, point the, the, there. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Over so there. So it's hard to do, but hi, Lenny. <laughs> Lenny is hanging in there and hanging out. And I also have my, his brother, uh, Joey, and my daughter-in-law, Clara, here in the studio. So thanks for being here. Good to have you. They're over there. So we're all hanging in there together. And uh, today we're going to take you to Soto, at least for now, virtually there yes. in Germany. And yes. next slide is something we always look at um, on the first slide. We always look <laughs> at things that we share, right? And this is a very traditional uh, Hawaiian dish, isn't it? It is not a Hawaiian dish, and it's not traditional. The pineapple is uh, something that's very much associated with the Hawaiian Islands, but it's only because it grew to be a major industry here, not because the pineapple itself is from Hawaii, because it's actually from Central America. But there's this kooky thing that was invented in Germany, which is called Toast Hawaii, which we see on the left side of the screen, which is a German concoction, in which there's a piece of pineapple on a piece of toast. And um, down in the lower corner, we've also got a picture of a mechanized, huge mechanized machine that was part of the large scale agriculture that used to be functioning here in the Hawaiian Islands. But Martin accidentally chose a picture of a sugarcane machine, uh -oh. not a pineapple <laughs> machine, but they're both, there were big machines for both yeah, of them. Absolutely. And next slide, we want to encourage the audience here to think about how they grew up and um, what sort of impacted them. And we always say it's certainly climate that impacts culture. So this just shows us both knowing the cold, me more than you, but you top left, you had your little I, dose I of it. I had my moments in the exactly. cold, yeah. And so the picture on the on the bottom right, second is me on uh, a roof terrace that the rented apartment had where how I grew up. And the right of that in front of our rotating think tank logo is actually the, the building. And it's a five story walk up, 96 steps. I'll never forget. Um, and when we were out of milk, my parents were saying, well, you get milk. And I said, no, because I was the one to to get it right <laughs> so um and where i got it was a little uh, mom and pop grocery store right at the bottom there where then eventually you had to go right and asked you for a picture too uh related to food and the one you've picked is at the top right and that's me looking at my birthday cake on my sixth birthday so everybody needs food and that's what we're going to talk about the and, places where you get food and they're very rare these days right yeah because next slide um is, um, you know, everything has been shut down and gets shut down and only the necessary and you can't do shopping and crazy things that you don't need. Right. But so, you know, we can get by with without many things, but not food. And this is why the grocery stores are actually a very sort of existential survival component in, in everyday life around the world. And that's what we want to talk about. Hopefully, again, exactly in about a year, we will if you guys are excited about, we will take you there where we have built these two case studies. So next spring break in 2021, um, we will hopefully again, all be back to health and happiness. And uh, you guys join us for um, thinking about that typology, obviously after this crisis here differently. Yeah. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, this gets you excited because it's historical, right? Soto? Yeah, so this is a small, what we would say in the United States was kind of a strip mall. It's actually a little shopping center and it's in Germany, obviously. 
This picture is probably from the 1960s, I'm gonna guess. Yeah. And this is the original site that is what we're gonna be talking about and what happened to it. But we're also talking about how this was at a time where people were still walking to small stores, not driving quite as much. Mm -hmm. And at the top, you see the progression of people getting gradually more obese because not only do we have larger portions and more to eat, but we don't walk as much as we used to. So here's the site and the original commercial building that was on it before Martin and his company had to do something different with it. Yeah. And this is heartbreaking because I believe and I tell everyone and especially the emerging generation that I have the pleasure and privilege to work with that the most responsible building is the one you don't build, although this sounds ironic if an architect says that or an architectural professor, but it is, it's the truth. The second one is the one you, that already exists and, put, and that's why I'm a founding member of Docomomo. And this was a very nice building, very easy and very appropriate but it just had no chance to survive because the nature of the tenants changed from mom and pop, small to big. So we made multiple efforts to save this and we failed and we had to replace it, which was hard. And so next slide uh, gives you little glimpses. We don't want to tell you too much because then you won't join us. But this, is, this was crucial because there is a price tag, as you can see up there, and $50 per square foot if you're not in the building industry this is almost nothing it's it's like almost impossible and we probably should have walked away but that's not our nature so we try to ask at least why and the client who you asked uh this is a is a is a private client who um uh, this is a grocery store community with a bunch of different uh single shops in there but this is the type how they normally look like and they look very generic they look very ugly and they're all over Germany. I call this aesthetical optical pollution. And that's why we like doctors x-ray that beast in that sort of section there and see what the hell is the nature of that and try to go up against that. But how can you do a prototype for the cost of a watered down serial type, right? Yeah. And obviously we will tell you when we get there, but we give you little ideas and hints and appetizers. So next slide is one of them and and for example we and we actually did when when our client was provoking us with that we we said okay we go up against it and we will do it but um you have to sign here that you have no saying in the architecture and he did and i had to pull out that note multiple times <laughs> and here we were spending you know uh, time and passion to do what we encourage our emerging people to do build physical models and this is the proposal of the volume. Next slide. And you pointed out to me when I asked that it occupies the same footprint. So the new building occupies the same footprint in space as the old building did. Yeah. And what's it with this crate? Well, that is a type of crate that you say everybody in Germany has. They're not as common in the United States, but it's a collapsible thing that will fold up so that it's flat. And so you're saying that that's kind of... Um, inspirational in a way for the building that you ended up creating yeah and, and the little on the left is a is a, is a sketch is a digital sketch we tell you more in details when we go there but the next slide gives you a hint of what uh, was existential and a survival strategy so tectonics as a survival strategy we do a lot but the most here we're only in prefab we're able to even dream about hitting this sort of brutal cost. And we have very specific Rocky Mountain Precast out there west, who we see, as we talk many times, as the only chance to continue to build on this island for a decent price. So prefab is a big thing. Next slide. And you were curious about that corner, right? Yeah, and you told me, interestingly, that because this actually sticks out over the boundary of the private property onto public property, you convince the owner that he would pay rent for those protruding corners that actually go beyond where his property is. And they're part of the entire structure that extends up kind of a floor above where the building ends. And you also were saying that this is uh, partly for, to create a distinctive identity for the building, to make it look different and stand out so that people will recognize it, see it, and approach it. Yeah, and also visibility, and next slide, because it's actually 
sort of covered uh, from the street uh, because they built stupid garages there. When we go out there, uh, we will stop at you know certain situations. I will tell you a very interesting story about how this one informed politics, and we will see <laughs> who the lady was at that time, and she still is, but in a different position. Next slide. And we had to deal with very sort of profane things, like you know, where due to code or the program of of the of the tenant uh, where they have their safe and they collect their money you have to protect that and it looks like in the wild west right outside of the the prisons and of course <laughs> that's not something you want in a in the heart of community so we had to work with that and it sort of reminded you of here right at a certain notion on the left how we sort of well it, that. one of the what you pointed out is that there is this screening that's used above where those windows are and obviously the windows are very barricaded with this metal grating to protect them. But above there is something that I think is there if not only for aesthetics and for, I think, the continuity of the metal texture, but also here it would be something that would be very useful in a tropical climate where we've got the sun. So that's kind of a, that is a metal mesh. And you said that that's something that is usually used for people to scrape their shoes on and we don't need people to scrape their shoes here because we don't walk around in slush and <laughs> mud as some people have to do in temperate climates. So that's something that you use that was already commercially available, but just in a different kind of way. And I asked you how it had stood up since this was installed. And you told me that I have to go to Germany to see for myself. So I guess I do have to go to Germany to see. Yeah, and then I will show you. That's right. So next slide is again, this is it shortly after being completed. Um, at that point, there was actually no uh, textbooks about it. And we actually initiated uh, the one at the very top left. And then there was another one following. And so we will pass these out as reading assignments. And so people can prepare uh, for um, our tour. Next slide. And, and here is what you were asking, here's certain sort of appetizers for it, right? This is our yeah. POE, post-occupancy evaluation, EBD, evidence-based design, LCA, life cycle assessment. These are all original and exclusive American terms for saying a good building is only a good building, you know, when it proves that over time. So again, we will go there. These are impressions here from shortly after the opening where you can see how that sort of very simple had to be and very rigid structure is basically just like the crate, a container for multiple things to collect right. and to comprise, which is all these different tenants. Right? But as you pointed out, the, the continuity of the building is still there. So the multiple tenants do not, one, multi, one tenant doesn't overwhelm another tenant. Yeah. And one of the ways that we were discussing is signs. And obviously there are controls here as to how much signage can be put up to not wreck that facade that you worked on. Yeah. And I was asking you about what the sign laws are in that area, because here in Hawaii, we have, of course, very strict sign laws. Mm. But chain stores often will require their buildings to look the same and also their signage to look the same. So that's something that you obviously were able to work with because you pointed out to me that those three major tenants that are in the sign that's on the left are all chain stores they and are. so they've all got an they've all got an identity that yeah. they want to make sure everybody recognizes and they were a pain in the butt to work with because they're not interested in customization right so no. we forced them to and the tricks and we call this smuggling ever since and also had to smuggle things into the client because the client was i always say you know and i love all my clients and you know he's he's a nice guy he just can't come across differently as who almost invented if predator capitalism wouldn't have been invented here in this country, he would have, you know, and he runs <laughs> one dollar stores in his real life to make to make a living. And that's his mindset. Right. And so we will tell you then on on the tour uh, what we all had to smuggle in. And like these, you know, young girls eating ice cream, for example, are beneficiaries of our smuggling yeah. strategy. Yeah. And right. We will right. save that for when you join us. Right. So, next slide. Yeah, and, and these are again uh, very fresh. These are from last year. What do we see there? And they're kind of obviously kind of saddening now because that's uh, the opposite of social distancing, which we have to do these days. This is social connecting. And again, having hopefully going through all that and coming out of it 
okay and and stronger then hopefully will allow us to do that again right yeah and and you pointed out some really again the thing that you smuggled in here without getting too specific is the ability for people to sit down mm -hmm. and you had to kind of you had to sneak that in and also the shopping cart station um how you developed that specifically for this site and how the guy who's playing the accordion who is an urban nomad, as you say, might benefit from that because of how he might get money from people, is, which is something that we don't do in the USA. So that'll have to be explained once people get there. Exactly. The next slide. And and this is this is the lady here who has to. Um, she's the head and the president of the European Union Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and w when you go with us, we will tell you how she, as being a jura in the highest um, award, architectural award on the state level, had been educated throughout the process of having been not just a jura, but on the left, you can see our most important architect, Stefan Banish, here sitting next to her, and they're on a panel discussion. And there's some really interesting stories behind that we'll share with you how architecture and sometimes very profane and little architecture can inform big people. Right, and in the picture on the lower right, that is an unrecognizable younger Martin standing with this lady in question and his father. I would not have recognized yeah, you me, in me that either picture. either if I look back. Uh, and, yeah, we've and, all changed and, over the years. To deflect from that, back again from that one is that Orzola, hopefully she looks very sort of serious and concerned for obviously reasons because she's in charge of dealing with the corona crisis that we're having. Hopefully we can get her back to happiness as she was <laughs> down there, right? Right. So next slide. Uh, we're back to the island and this is where you reside at the foothills and I'm looking at you this way from our uh, residences. Yes. And I'm always blown away how, again, how climate and here rain informs um, view and spectacle in a most organic and bioclimatic way. It's just amazing, right? How yeah. climate had, turns from brown in the summer when it's dry to green when we say it's winter in Hawaii when Diamond Head is green. Right. 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 And that was sort of an inspiration or at least a motivation or provocation for us. Next slide. How can we do that with with another building and and you you said kindly last time that you asked me if what did you ask me about the sort of the uh, the serial killer nature right what what did i ask you about <laughs> i don't remember that <laughs> no you said once you have done a building oh yeah yeah you know, yeah halfway, not, a, not a serial killer but you become a serial builder or designer once you've done one building successfully, then you have other clients come to you to do similar buildings that have similar um, functions. Yeah, sort of a serial guerrilla smuggler. Maybe. Yeah, that's right. Say, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here, the nature of that street is pretty much informed by the beautiful row of trees here, street green, that gives a lot of shade. That's what we're saying we need more here. And the building, again, you can almost not see. There's some sort of notion of something, but it's more like there's more trunks there someone built more trees or something, yes. but next slide, we had to build a new building. And these are just a, a bunch of inspirations we had that again, once you join us, we'll talk about more where they come from. I had actually been in the prairie at that time we designed that. So there's inspiration from there and from multiple other things. And next slide is, uh, is what DeSoto? Well, this is the, the market that was built, and you, point, you said that this is a small chain of markets, and so this is just one of them. Mm -hmm. They specialize in beverages on one side of the store, and the other side they do food. Yeah. But as you just pointed out with the pictures, the three views of Diamond Head. Diamond Head changes its appearance very dramatically from up time to time and season to season, and this store does the same thing because if you look at the top, it's got a metal mesh that is almost in the place of a second story. And depending on where the sun is, it might be illuminating the front of it, or it might be illuminating the back of it so that you see through. Mm -hmm. So the store looks very different over the day, depending where the sun is. Yeah, just through material knowledge and properties and with no gimmicks, no fancy LEDs or- you know, Correct. Because this is, uh, this is all low budget projects, pretty much. A pretty profane typology. Next slide. 
And again, um, we will tell you, I mean, metal, and this is why you said, because metal mesh screens are so familiar to you. We could be talking about that they were really big in the mid-century era yes. that we love so much. Yes. And there's some on campus and there's some on King Street and, and others, and we will keep talking about them. Here, actually, the material might be a little different, and that could be in addition to the island. And we'll add to that and give you a little clue that the truck at the very bottom there that's delivering the, the beverages is actually not a uh, Matson or a, a Young or a Pasha truck as we know them, but they're somehow different. And you already can see where we're going, and we'll tell you more in detail when you join us. Next slide. Um, you know, sustainability is obviously you want to have markets to consume less energy. And uh, here, different than our our public clients who always foster passive systems, but never active system. Here was almost the opposite. They were like, there was a no brainer to have another company rent uh, the roof and throw photovoltaics on it. And again, while it helps to keep the building, you know, uh, uh, cost down and, and energy down, I, again, for me, it was never an architectural feature. It's of course an integral building performance feature, but it has nothing to do with the architecture. Next slide. However, other elements obviously very much kind of have. Next slide. Which we see here as parts of our vegetated. That's something we're fostering and promoting here for the island. Vegetate and vegetate, vegetate. That's our cheapest way of cooling buildings. We tried that there. Next slide. And what surprised you about that? Well, you said that this was an unusual situation in that the client allowed you to also uh, design the interior of the store as well as the exterior of the building structure. And what you said very aptly is when you go into stores that sell food, they're cold. And one of the reasons they're cold is because refrigerated or frozen air is constantly flowing out of the structures that are supposed to contain it. And here, instead of letting it just flow out, these were specially designed freezers or refrigerator cases that are flat and they therefore the cold just stays in them but they've also got covers on them so that that in in addition helps keep the cold air inside and not diffused into the rest of the room um, you just also said that this is not necessarily a good thing in the time of coronavirus where you don't want to be touching surfaces yeah. but um, it's a very clever and a very useful thing and it also looks good too it, it's actually a very attractive store interior that that contributes to slide. Um, another textbook here that this project made it in, it's the volume two of that Boston department store. And again, if we're lucky, I mean, this year we didn't have that white stuff that would be so cool for people from here had never seen. And so there's snow and there might be some at the end of March, but more importantly here, you can see how that sort of awning Cantilever helps in this case to let the low sun into the building and basically heat it. So it's not just a an ornamental function as you always yeah. question that critically, but it's a performative one as yeah, we like to do right. things. And next slide. And we, we were talking about the last the last one already. There is there is elevating the structure above the roof, right? And we're sort of envisioning or daydreaming about certain things that could happen there, right? Right. I mean, and, and they could. We were actually talking about maybe these grocery stores and some start to do to grow their own food that they sell on their roofs. Uh, this is actually the grocery store of um, my youngest son, Lenny, who lives in this hood here and is driving by. And he has said, oh, dad, you know, they kind of naked it. And while we <laughs> like being naked here in Hawaii and we foster and promote that, but over there, uh, for the explained reasons, maybe. So we're curious what happened. The next slide. Um, they redressed again. So we were seeing that's, you know, and that's something we should maybe talk about more here. About we do a show, our most challenging, but maybe one of our most relevant ones about skins, right? Yes, so maybe right. Maybe buildings need to do more undressing at times and be more dressed at other times. Right. So. And, but I'm glad to see that they kept the integrity of the original building, even when they removed the existing original screen, they put it back. Yeah, yeah. And next slide, um, absolutely. Thanks, Lenny, for taking that picture. We will go one town over, which is Hamburg. Obviously, again, the Queen Mary won't have the quarantine issues anymore. They have now, we just count on that one. 
And we will obviously go, I mean, this crisis is really making us think above and beyond, right? Where is retailers going? Jay and you and I had a really lively yeah. discussion about that after the show. Is it going all away from any kind of contact? Everything is automated. You even walk in the store that the Amazon store and the flagship store, the new prototype in Seattle has by Amazon where you walk in and out and it immediately charges you by walking out with you without you noticing it. Even. Right. And other things. I mean, is it going back to the vending machines you both kind of romantically remember? <laughs> uh, we don't know. And that's what the tour is about to really it, it's less about just, you know, looking at these and that's it for the sake of it. But it's actually taking them and saying, OK, what is actually the next step? And obviously in big cities, they're booming and are innovative. This is uh, Hamburg's Harbor City. Um, um, and it has a lot of similarities to Kaka'ako. There was a previous show with here, one of the colleagues of Joey currently, for whom he's working for, the company he's working for. And what do they take home from there? And what could be their final deliverable, DeSoto, and for that last slide? Yeah, so when, when people have the students and those who also go with them, uh, when they get back home, they will have to do a report, obviously, on what they saw and what was explained to them and what they learned. And so it probably should be in the form of a episode of Think Tech, like we have just completed. We're in the process of completing right now. So after everybody gets home, that's what they'll do. They'll tell everybody else about what they saw and learned in a think tech show, just like the one we just did. Yeah, and we obviously want to encourage, you know, people from all disciplines. They could be engineers of all kinds, structural, mechanical ones, health people, obviously, in this case, nutritional people, right? Yeah. Uh, urbanism, uh, Department of Urban Planning, and uh, journalists, for example. So we hope you all join us again a year from now uh, for this nutrition trip to uh, Northern Germany. Uh, we look forward to that. And until then, um, I will go there. At the very bottom, you were pointing out here is my strategical documents at yeah. the very bottom right. They might help me to actually get back. They will. And so, um, again, next time I will take you with me to Soto. And okay. I will take everyone else with us who is excited about it now. And um, if you can't get on this tour, there will be one more about another very important typology that we will share with you next week. Uh, again, in a very cosmopolitan way, because you will be here and at home staying safe, hopefully everyone else too, and I will that too at the other end of the world. And until then, obviously, stay very healthy and happy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.